I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based in New York City. And welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you who do not know me, we do this every Saturday morning and we cover a topic of the day or of the week rather, because I only do this once a week, uh, where we do deep dives. Deep dives into everything skincare, beauty, and inner wellness related, um, because my goal honestly is to help you help yourself. Today, get your pens and papers out because we're doing a deep dive. Peptides have made a big resurgence, I think, in the skincare world because of its relationship to quote-unquote anti-aging. And I have a lot of issues with this word anti-aging um, because why are we opposed to aging? If we were not aging, we would be dead. Now, I don't think we need to age like a shriveled prune and just let ourselves go because that's just depressing, I think we have to embrace the aging process and learn how to make ourselves the best we can be at every stage of life. And skincare can definitely help and make a difference. Obviously, at some points, if you're not getting everything out of your skincare, you go into an office and you do a little things that are a tiny bit invasive every single once in a while to sort of boost your routine. But do not change your essence is my personal goal. And anti-aging is just such a shitty term that I do not like because I think we should really honestly embrace the fact that we can live to be 70, 80, 90, 100 years old today, whereas 100 years ago, we were living to be like 60, 70 years old at most. So I don't know if that's completely accurate, <laughs> maybe a thousand years ago. Um, so that is that. Um, but it's making a big resurgence in the skincare world because of its quote-unquote anti-aging benefits. I'm going to say because of its ability to help promote stronger, healthier, more youthful collagen. Now, how does it have that ability? It is, in fact, what is a peptide? A peptide is a short-chain amino acid. It's tiny little fragments of a longer protein. Proteins are made up of peptides. Now, what are certain proteins that are made up of peptides in our body? We have collagen, elastin, keratin, things that give our skin health, our skin a bounce and firmness and our hair healthy hair, as well as stronger nails. And so all of these things are made up of proteins, which are in fact made up of peptides. So in English, peptides are fragments of proteins. Um, and as we age, we lose firmness, we lose bounce, and we lose and we form more wrinkles because the proteins get broken down and start to break down even more so. And so how then, are you going to ask, are topical peptides helpful if they're pieces of proteins and you need the larger proteins? Well, my little nerd, peptides, they're like, do you guys remember in the 80s and 90s, the tricks are for kids commercials, the cereal tricks are for kids? Peptides are the tricks are for kids for the adults <laughs> because they are tricking your skin. They're tricking your body into believing you have a wound by applying these short little tiny chains of amino acids onto our skin. Our skin is tricked into believing we have some form of injury on our skin. That will also cause your body to go into higher gear and form collagen and elastin. For some people, it may be inflammatory. For some people, they may not tolerate this. And for those people, I would say avoid because I would not want you to undergo a chronic state of inflammation because over time that is going to age you way more than any short-term benefit of a peptide will offer you. So if you are getting red, inflamed, irritated, it ain't for you. However, if you cannot tolerate a retinol, because retinols can be very irritating to a lot of people, then peptides might be worth your while to look into. But do you need to spend $500 for a peptide? Not quite, because the research is still not fully there. There is some good direction. It's pointing in the right direction, but I think we still need more robust studies proving the benefits and efficacies of peptides because otherwise you're just wasting $300 and there are other things you can do for yourself that are going to be a much more sure hit and better guarantee. Maybe going in for a laser treatment, maybe getting a Fraxel resurfacing, maybe even doing some sort of thermage or ultrasound or radio frequency microneedling instead. Just saying, because you do one or two of those treatments and you save yourselves the cost of a peptide cream in certain cases. 
But when I say peptides, it sounds like all peptides do the same thing. They do not. And this is where marketing uh, and within the beauty industry bothers the S-H-I-T out of me. Because even in some of the products I'm about to recommend, they write on the boxes that there are peptides on them. And I'm going to just read one right now. This one is a blend of brighteners, antioxidants, and peptides. Which peptides? Because there are four types of peptides. There are carrier peptides, peptides that carry trace minerals like copper and magnesium. And these ones help not only boost collagen, but also firm your skin. They help to basically combat photoaging, aging due to discoloration of your skin. Number two, you have enzyme inhibitors, two very big words that should not be scary. Enzymes cause a chemical reaction to happen. An inhibitor blocks that enzyme. Certain peptides that are enzyme inhibitors block the reaction of proteins breaking down, and these slow the breakdown of collagen. There are sort of two types, some derived from rice, and the rice proteins help to make collagen and retain collagen, rather not make them, and soy-derived enzymes help to prevent pigment formation. So these ones, the enzyme inhibitors, are preventative. They prevent the breakdown, they prevent the formation. Then we have signal peptides, bing, 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 that are signaling, 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 and these are sending messages. These are the ones that are really tricking your skin. Like, oh, I have inflammation, I have an irritation, we have a cut, we have a cut, we have a wound, we have a wound. Body, make, make, make. These are the ones that are making collagen. And those are like examples like palmitoyl pentopeptide. But there's a lot of other ones which we will eventually get to. And then we have neurotransmitter peptides. Now, if ever you see a product that says, this is Botox in a jar, first of all, they're going against the FDA. You're not allowed to claim that any sort of product is like Botox in a jar, FYI. But if you do see that sort of marketing around the product, it means that it contains, and I'm going to butcher this word, argireline. A-R-G-I-R-E-L-I-N-E -E, because this blocks the release of the chemical within the neurotransmitter that causes your muscles to contract. So your wrinkles, your active wrinkles, your wrinkles that are formed with movement, oh, mm, 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 slow down because they're not contracting as much. So instead of going, oh my God, they'll probably be like, oh my God. <laughs> but it's not Botox in a jar. And the data is still slightly iffy around it. Plus, it does not last that long. So just saying, just saying, just saying. It doesn't really replace Botox. But it is often used as a marketing tool. So benefits that I see from using peptides, they help decrease some fine lines if you're using especially a signal peptide. They help to improve your skin barrier by allowing to hold on to hydration by forming stronger collagen and making better and more healthy elastin. They do help to um, lock in hydration and to return back the firmness and the bounce of your skin. The biggest drawbacks are they are not miracle cures. There is no hope in a jar, at least no hope in a single jar. You need several jars to get to your end goal. Um, they do not work as well as Botox. Do not spend $300 on a cream that you think you're going to get benefits from every single time with long-term gain. Um, because you probably will not. Um, they don't go for the super duper expensive ones, even though they are very expensive to formulate. If you are saving every last penny to buy a peptide cream, save your money on something else. Put it towards a procedure instead is my personal take because I don't think you're going to necessarily get all of the hopes and dreams that peptides are promising. And I think that there's still developing research that is needed. So if you are on a budget and you are looking to where to spend your money, go for the tried and trues, the alpha hydroxy acids, the retinols, the brighteners actually out there like hydroquinone, kojic acid, arbutin, vitamin C, because those are really strongly backed by science. And... With so many peptides out on the market, when you see a claim that says supercharged with brighteners, antioxidants, and peptides, then look up in the product, do some research, find out what are the peptides in that product so you are better educated to understand what you're actually using them. So it's annoying because you have to be a very educated consumer. So without further ado, I tried to do a small roundup of some of the peptides that, peptide products that I found to be interesting, okay? Um, starting with 
how I would use them in a skincare routine. And the other thing is, do you need peptides in every step of your skincare routine? Probably not, because there is probably a point of no return where you like you reach a terminal velocity where you're getting the maximum benefit, and after that, it's kind of futile. So you'd probably be wasting your money if you try to incorporate peptides in every step of your skincare routine. So for those looking to incorporate peptides with an exfoliating acid, remember I mentioned that the um, what was it the carrier peptides definitely help with combating photo aging. Well. Allies of Skin has a Mandelic Pigmentation Correcting Night Serum that looks like this. And in this, there's Mandelic Acid, Lactic Acid, Salicylic Acid, and Bakushal, in addition to certain peptides. And I looked up which peptides. I don't like that they write peptides blankly like this, but one of the peptides in here that I find interesting is the Nanopeptide 1, which is known to inhibit the production of melanin. So it works synergistically with the Mandelic and the Lactic Acid, as well as the Bakushal, to help give you brightening effects. I would recommend that you use this guy. I'm going to just have to like that. It has a little color. I'm never turned off by color of products because you just, that's, I'd rather it appear the color that it is than they try to like whiten or brighten or bleach a product. Um, but this guy is a great one to use at night, especially if you're trying to combat hyperpigmentation, sun damage, brown spots. All right. Is it going to be strong enough for melasma? I'm not a hundred percent sure. I probably think not, but if you do have sunspots, I think it's a nice one to look into. And it retails for 95 bucks, but a little spot, a little pump goes a long way. So 95 bucks should probably last you like three months. Okay. Then we have um, Kiehl's. Kiehl's has their Retinol Skin Renewing Daily Microdose Serum. So this actually contains 0.1% retinol over the counter, which is pretty high. It's one of the strongest ones. It's usually 0 0.03, 0 0.05, and then 0 0.1. So this is not for the sensitive souls out there. And you might be asking, why do I need peptides if I'm using retinol? It's a very good point. But this is for those who are more advanced in the skincare game, who are not quite ready for an over description, over the over the for a prescription tretinoin, but want more from the retinol. Kiehl's is the one probably that I would go for because it's 0.1% over the counter and it has a certain type of peptide. And I'm going to read this for you guys. Acetyl dipeptide 1 acetyl ester, which is combat, composed of tyrosine and arginine. And these are basically messenger carriers. Um, carrier peptides, so they're the ones basically, the messenger peptides, I apologize, that are basically signaling as well as the muscle relaxant ones. So it's going to work by basically tricking your skin into thinking there's a slight little injury so that you need to promote more collagen production. And it's also going to work by instantly helping calm your muscle down so that the appearance of your fine lines are not there. But again, is it Botox in a bottle? It is not. But it is very interesting. And I'll show you guys the texture. It is thicker. This pea-sized amount is probably what I would use for like my whole face. I mean, I have makeup on today, but I will show you guys because whatever. Um, it's not going to work that well because I'm applying it under direct sunlight. I use this mostly just at night. And then I would buffer it especially if it's 0.1, and I'm not going to do this to myself, with Vaseline underneath my eyes to help with all of the fine lines. Again, I am lacking Kleenex. You would think by now I would have that box ready to go whenever I do one of these videos. So that is one. If you do not want to tolerate 0.1% retinol, then Allies of Skin, again, has a retinal and peptide. Much lighter than retinol, so better for sensitive skin, especially if you don't think you can tolerate any prescription tretinoin, then I would go for this guy. And the Allies of Skin Retinol uh, and Peptides Repair Night Cream has three main types of peptides that stood out. Palmitoyl Tetrapeptide 7, Oligopeptide, and, tetra and Caproil pep Tetrapeptide 3. But basically, Tetrapeptide 7 is an anti-inflammatory peptide because it blocks interleukin-6, which is a key... Um, it's a key interleukin for inflammation, so it's going to help minimize inflammation. So this is a good one for sensitive skin and for those who are trying to enter the retinol game but don't know where to start. 
It is expensive. It's $115. Could you just try the retinol 0.03 like by, from L'Oreal without the peptides? Absolutely. But if you're trying to get more and you're really just trying to do everything you can for yourself, you could maybe try this guy. And it also is slightly yellow in tint. I like that they are opaque. I like that they are protected from the sun. I like that they come in pumps and not droppers. These products, at least from a packaging standpoint, are all a win. Okay, moving on. What if you don't want to use a retinol? And what if you want to use a peptide more so during the day? Well, there's a couple of moisturizers that I have here. One is by In Beauty Project. It's their 10 plus 10 moisturizer. This one has a vitamin C complex in it. So don't be fooled by the 10%. Um, that's written on the box. It's not 10% vitamin C. It's a complex of 3O ethyl ascorbate and THD, which I love tetrahexyl decyl, love THD. And then it also has, at least they write 10% peptide complex. So it's not 10% peptides. It's a combination of peptides that basically add up to 10%. The other thing with peptides is we just don't know the percentage. So don't be fooled by percentages that we see on boxes because we don't know what the exact percentage that we need in order to get the benefits. But this is a nice one because it also has the palmitoyl tetrapeptide 7, which is anti-inflammatory, as well as palmitoyl tripeptide 1. Now, these two, by the way, are what make up Matrixil 3000. Now, you guys have probably heard about Matrixil 3000, and I'm going to read to you guys a little something I wrote. It is a trademarked peptide composed by Sederma Inc. in France, and it is the first quote-unquote anti-aging ingredients based on the matrikine peptide technology made up of palmitoid tripeptide 1 and palmitoid tetrapeptide 7. So, this is basically Matrixil 3000 in here. If you guys are thinking about using it, they work synergistically to restore and maintain the skin's youthful appearance by signaling cells to produce more collagen. Numerous studies have proven the anti-wrinkle efficacy of Matrixil 3000. So it's a very well-known peptide on the market that brands can use. They did not write it as Matrixil 3000. They broke it down into the two main components that make it up. And it looks like this. So if you do not want to use a retinol cream, but you just want to use a nice moisturizer and you just want to use it for the day as well, it's very nice. There is no scent. It is a beautiful consistency and honestly, well done in Beauty Project. Um, the other one that I think is also interesting is the one by, I recently uh, was introduced to this brand called Edom, and they have a cloud cushion cream, just like here. I'll show it to you guys. This is $58. This one is expensive because of the ceramides. So if you have a broken skin barrier and you're looking to really just help restore your skin barrier, this one right here is loaded in ceramides and peptides. And they have tetrapeptide 30 in it, which basically they call out. It's a single peptide. It's not a complex. And it's made up of four amino acids that help also with hyperpigmentation and brown spots to even out skin tone. So I think this is very interesting. Plus, it has some nice anti-inflammatory action as well, which works hand in hand with the ceramides to restore your skin barrier. I think the packaging is a little bit heavy. For my personal liking, like I wouldn't want to travel with this and I don't love, same for InBeauty Project, jars. But there's no scent, it's a thick rich cream and um, it is easy. And this one is probably better geared for those who are looking to restore their skin barrier. And then last, Skin Better Science is a brand that you can see at a lot of Durham's offices that carry it. It's quote unquote a medical grade brand, but medical grade is absolute bullshit. So I do not stand by their marketing. All that means is that they're selling it through practitioners. That's all that it means. But they have a tech techno neck perfecting cream. And what's in this cream? Peptides are in this cream. Um, and I'll tell you which ones so you guys can know. Um, arginine, so what we talked about as well as heptapeptide 7 and nicotinia bentaminia exapeptide 40 polypeptide 76, which basically are peptides that help to push tissue growth factor 2 so you can produce more collagen. Um, it's for the neck. I think it's a little bit pricey, to be very perfectly frank. Um, this one is 140 bucks. So is it something that I would buy for myself? Probably not. Is it something I would buy for a loved one who doesn't know what to turn to? Absolutely, because it's a nice gift. And I would use it also as an eye cream because this one, at least, you know, you're not going to irritate your eyes if you're very sensitive to retinol and a little bit goes a long way. 
So that, my friends, are peptides in a nutshell. I know it can be confusing. We're going to have to do some digging around if ever we see peptides on a box and hope that the brands that are promoting the peptides at least present to you with the research that backs up the peptides used because oftentimes and sadly more often than not it is just a marketing claim that people throw in there because it can mean that it can be more expensive and it is accepted as such without you the consumer fully understanding what you're paying for if you're getting much of that effect and on that note i am dr shireen idris a cosmetic dermatologist based in new york city i hope you guys have a beautiful saturday